Hello and welcome to Plaid Stallion's Toy Ventures. This week we've got a toy line that really deserves to be talked about more in the form of Denny Fisher's Cyborg, a UK toy line by way of Japan. But before we jump into the backstory, I'd like to remind everybody that if you dig vintage toy videos like this, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel. This is what we do around here. The Cyborg story begins in Japan when toy maker Takara marketed Hasbro's G.I. Joe under the name Combat Joe, and they got the bright idea to add some costumes such as Mirror Man, Kamen Rider, and Zone Fighter, just to name a few. But they didn't stop there. They decided to tinker with the Hasbro G.I. Joe body and create an entirely new character. That creation was known as Henshin Cyborg, which translates to Transforming Cyborg. The figures had translucent bodies that gave the appearance of being a futuristic machine being. If you think they look a little like Micronauts, you're not wrong. Micronauts is a spin-off of Henshin Cyborg, which then spun off into something called Transformers, but that's someone else's story to tell. Henshin Cyborg was not alone in his adventures. He had a boy sidekick known as Shonen Cyborg, an ally known as Android A, and, of course, a bad guy to fight in the form of King Waldar. They even had a pet jaguar. The Henshin Cyborg line had a slew of accessories, vehicles, play sets, and most importantly, costumes. Henshin Cyborg got a mix of original creations and the finest TV and comic characters Japan had to offer. Over 40 sets were produced. King Waldor even got a set of original creations by Takara. Even the pet jaguar got costumes. This was a big deal and a huge seller for Takara. The ultimate confrontation, Cyborg, Savior of Earth, against Android, a new horrible adversary, capable of mutating giant crushing legs and weird arms of great power, dealer in destruction. Beat that, Cyborg. Is this Cyborg's answer? The Invader, a fantastic new intergalactic starship with an interceptor pod and built-in weapon system. Cyborg versus Android, with the Earth for the prize. In 1975, the Dennis Fisher Toy Company, uh, creators of Spirograph, licensed the Cyborg range from Takara for sales in the UK. They were enjoying the success of another Cyborg in the form of the $6 million man, and they crafted a new look and mythos for the toy line. The first and most important change is these 12-inch figures were taken down from their 1 6 scale to 1 9 scale, most famously known as Mego scale. It's not known why this decision was made, but it's likely cost-based. Denny Fisher released 8-inch versions of Henshin Cyborg, Android A, and King Waldar. They renamed all of them to Cyborg, Android, and Muton, respectively. The back of the packaging told the story of an apocalyptic future of 2250, the world brought to its knees by Muton, an alien from the death-black reaches of outer space who had turned Earth's mightiest nuclear warriors to dust. All of Earth's greatest brains teamed up and used all the remaining resources to create Cyborg, skin of diamonds, sinew of pure plutonium, and the life force powered by an indestructible core of unlimited energy. He has only one all-consuming desire, destroy Muton. Cyborg came with two arm attachments, the Cybernators, the Liquidator, which is a mini water pistol, and the Eliminator, a little plastic bolt firing gun. If anyone has a spare bolt, I would love it. Muton came with two arm attachments as well, the, the Scorch Bore and the Venom Injector. Android is now a bad guy and came with chest firing rockets, which are always good. Unlike Japan, only three costumes were released in the UK, and they were all for Muton. They included Torg, a skull-like costume which was originally created for Waldar by Takara, Amulak, which was called Fishman in Japan and was for Henshin Cyborg. Akron X is the most notable character here because he's Super Robot Red Baron, a Japanese to television series that aired in the early 1970s. Kids in the UK, of course, would have no idea who he was. Muton got a flying saucer vehicle, and if that was too pricey, Denny Fisher also marketed its chair all by its lonesome. 
Cyborg got his own vehicle, the Cyborg Inceptor, to fight back. He was also given three different sets of Cybernators. You could buy these and swap these arms out. They come with things like the Cybo Cutter, Cybo Mobile, Cybo Paralyzer. There are some tremendously fun and innovative attachments here. Android had three different carded sets as well, and they had replacement heads, legs, and arms for Android. The swappability of limbs being a real strength they're leaning on here and really adding to the fun of the toy line. Just a quick heads up that issue five of our magazine Toy Ventures is available now and shipping. Order now and you can get a free Mr. Rock Cosmic Space Flyer. This is a real fun issue. If you like vintage toys, please consider checking out Toy Ventures magazine. Thank you. Denise Fisher's Cyborg is a really ambitious line that was way ahead of its time, if you ask me. I, I do not know if it was a big hit or a dud in the market, but as an adult collector, I can tell you it's a thing of beauty, uh, something I wish I had more of, and also something I wish people talked about more. What's your take on this line? Please let me know in the comments below, or you can hit me up in our Facebook group, Migo Knockoff Headquarters, where we talk about 8-inch action figures like Cyborg all the time. Thank you, as always, for watching. If you're new to this, please consider hitting like and subscribe. Until next time, be well and talk toys, not others. Cheers.